Give me a second. All right. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And with that, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.32. And we will just do a roll call vote as I see you on my screen. So Ronnie Parker, you could just say present. Present. Tyler. Present. Laverne. Present. <clears throat> ben. Present. And Juliana. Present. Awesome. All right. So I'm not sure that a package actually got emailed uh, out to everybody, but I did find it on the website. Did you all get an agenda thing? Yeah. Oh, maybe it was just me then. <laughs> yeah. So be, um, before we go on, I just uh, want to um, welcome our new members. And I'm sure, Philip, you're probably going to do that as well. But um, Tyler, you have not officially been sworn in yet. So while you're welcome to participate in the proceedings tonight, give your opinion, you cannot officially vote until you're sworn in. And so we'll need to um, connect um, offline and connect you with the town clerk's office to do that. So. Yes. So. Thank you for that. And with that, we will uh, introduce ourselves. If we could just go around really quick, maybe just say how long you've been on the commission. So that way for our newest member, and then Ronnie, you can go last and you can give um, anything you wanna say for that. So my name is Philip Avila. I have been on this commission since 2021, I believe in um, August, and I am one of the co-chairs. And I'll, well, let's just do a popcorn type of thing. So I'll pass it to Ben. Thank you. So I'm Ben Harrington. I'm the other co-chair. I've been on since 2019. I guess this is my second term. So, and then I will tag, I don't know who I'm gonna tag. Juliana? My name is Juliana. I've been on the commission for since spring, ish like june of 2022 um and i'll pass it to pamela hello i'm pamela i'm the staff liaison for the commission and i will pass it to uh tyler i'm tyler i've been on the commission since um november i think but i still need to be uh officially sworn in and I'll um, pass it to Laverne. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm Laverne Kelly, and um, I've been on sworn into the commission since earlier this month, but I've been at the November meeting. All right, Ronnie, if you want to introduce yourself and say. Hi, I'm Ronnie. Um, I've lived in Amherst since for just over a year. Um, I am newly appointed but I have been sworn in. I got in before Tyler could. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very excited to be part of this group. Um, thank you. Awesome. Thank you for joining and everybody else. Let's see. So um, I don't have any announcements um, other than that we do have a Lunar New Year event coming up on the 29th, but that is on our agenda. So we can discuss more about that later. Um, agenda review. So we have public comment that's happening next um, after this, and then HRC member reports, if anybody has any, then uh, we'll HRC bylaws, um, complaint review process, Lunar New Year, and then Black History Month, and then anything that we did not anticipate 48 hours for if someone would like to bring anything up, um, you have an opportunity to do so under 
Item six, um, approval of 11, 17 minutes. Did we get those? That go out? I'm, I'm not sure that that, uh, that the minutes were sent out. So I, there, there may have been, uh, well, there are some probably glitches with today's packet because it was my first opportunity to post <laughs> um, to an, the both the, the announcement to the town clerk's office about the meeting and the packet. So the packet does appear in um, on the website for the HRC, but I'm not sure that those materials got attached to the email. I think it was just the agenda, but I um, Jen was trying to train me. So I apologize for that glitch. That's all right. So we'll approve those minutes next time at our next meeting. So then with that, then we are going to move on to item number two, which is going to be public comment. So members of the public, if you wouldn't wish to speak, you can do so by just raising your hand. I see two attendees. Um, if no one would like to speak, then we're going to go once, twice. All right, we're going to move on. HRC member reports. Does anybody have anything that they would like to report out on? I just have um, one report that with the CSSJC, which is another committee that I am a part of. Uh, uh, excuse me, I'm forgetting the whole acronym right now. The Community Safety Social Justice Committee. Yes, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Pamela. Um, so with um, them and with, as well as our committee, the last that we had discussed about post, um, and the post complaint process and all that we filed with injunction with them just to inform um, the post commission about the July 5th incident. So that way it can just be on record. So that's all I have with both updates from this committee and that committee as well. Anybody else have anything? Don't see anything. All right. Then we will move on to the HRC bylaws. So at our retreat, which I'm realizing that most of you were not at actually, except for I think me and Ben, um, we discussed about um, kind of this upcoming year and what we would like to see what we'd like to do as a commission and as a committee. And we kind of uh, did this last year. And I do want to take a moment and just like kind of reflect on that piece of it. We last year really had on our agenda to have more visibility in the town, as well as um, participate in awareness of cultural events. And I think that with our newest members, I think we're doing something maybe to have some type of visibility. Um, and also I know that uh, myself and Ben just did an interview with the Amherst Indy to get out in the newspaper. So we are trying to make that visibility piece happen just to get people one aware of the HRC and just to have the, our names out there in town. And I will say personally, I think, um, the HRC does have a presence in town because now whenever I go to an event, I'm always, hey, you're the co-chair of the HRC, huh? So I think I think we're doing something <laughs> with that. And so with the bylaws, there's a lot of um, like legal language to it and a lot of, I think, update that needs to happen. I don't know when's the last time that it had been updated. But we are looking to, and Pamela, jump in if I am saying anything incorrectly, but uh, the town is doing kind of an overview of majority of their language type of access in things. 
And so with that, our bylaws came up in that discussion. And so thoughts, my thoughts are, is that it might make sense rather than us try and write, rewrite the bylaws to have someone, I believe the town attorney or town clerk go through it for a language accessibility across all platforms type of um, access to it. So that way we're not using language that is that isn't in conjunction with other documents that would be relevant when we do um, use our bylaws or access our bylaws. So it might make sense to have them go through it first, just to kind of use the language that they would use anyways, and then us go through it to change kind of like the content of it, not the language so much of it. Pamela, did I capture that right? Yeah, so the, uh, the, um, the prior HR director, shortly after I arrived, had asked me to take a look at the town's, uh, I believe it was their affirmative action plan, but there are uh, several diff different documents um, among the governing documents on town. So there's an affirmative action plan, there's an EEO policy, which is equal employment policy, the town created a diversity statement, and then there are the bylaws concerning the HRC. So um, the, my thinking was in discussion with um, Philip um, is that it makes a, probably the best use of the time of the commission to have the general counsel for the town review all of those documents for consistency first. And then um, um, uh, we can then re sort of respond or you guys can respond to their um, to their draft. So the um, the other ask that we would have of general counsel would be to review um, some suggested procedures for the Human Rights um, Commission. Um, the they've had longstanding um, bylaws about receiving complaints, but hadn't not previously had standards about how complaints would be processed. So we one of the things that we did at the retreat was review the by um, review the procedures from other towns around the Commonwealth and I made some suggestions about the length of time of responding how we would respond in those types of things so the goal would be to have all of that work done by the town account that by town council and then bring it back to the commission for review um if I could just jump in there because we, we've kind of we kind of started this conversation three years ago, maybe about the HRC bylaw and getting some languaging changed. So, so sans like the legalese part, there, there are some, so that the last update was like 2009, right? And there's some, um, how do I say this delicately? Actually, I won't say delicately. There's some borderline and, and probably crossing the line, like almost transphobic, not even almost transphobic language in there or language that could be construed as that. And like my recommendation would be that we Kind of, kind of let general counsel understand that that's something that we would like to be taken out and, and maybe even provide some suggestions. I, I would think that like in 2023, I, I I'd hope that people would know which which excerpts to take out and, and kind of reword, but but yeah, that, that's my two cents from the last couple of years there. Yeah. So I, I think that council would do that. One of the things, um, I mean, so if you contrast the diversity statement, which is the most recent statement mm -hmm. that the town has made, and you look at, I'm going to just for the, um, at the protected uh, classes that are included in that document, they do yep. look different. So I think having general counsel review all the documents and being consistent across all the documents that they would make that sort of correction. And of course, you know, we'll note that as well. Yep. Yeah, I think that you bring up a good point, Ben. I, I within reading some of it, I was like, oh yeah, this definitely has not been looked at. Like I thought we kind of knew better then. But... Yes. I'm trying to very quickly. I don't know that I can successfully do this because I'm doing it on an iPad. Is share kind of what I'm looking at. Um, that way, new members can hopefully 
look at our access to bylaws or Pamela, if you have an easier way to share that, if that can get done, I'm sure that our newer members would like to take a look at the bylaws that we're discussing and I, talking about. So I'll, that's the I'll thing that's in the packet. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're talking about? The piece that we yes. Yeah, so in the, in the I I'll, I can try to bring up the because we copied the two pages of the existing bylaws and they were in the packet. Um, so I can try to bring that on my up on my screen. Um, so I'm going to go off camera for a minute while I do while I look for that. Did anybody have um, time to look at the packet with the bylaws or anything? I did. Yeah. yeah, I skimmed through them just to see what was in there. As a new member, what are your general thoughts on them? Well, on this? My first thought was already flush the whole definition of gender identity. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a good stage. I think there are good questions being asked as far as making ourselves more visible. Um, the questions at the end for discussion, which I have some thoughts on as well. Um, yeah, I like some of the ideas. I don't know if anybody else read it and has something to say about it. I had questions actually about a bunch of it, including some of the procedures, but I guess all that's not done yet. Right, yeah, it's, it's an interesting point in our committee here because I think we can we can change these bylaws in a way that hopefully makes it a little bit more one accessible to people's understanding of certain definitions and certain language, but two also for this committee to kind of have that charge and that um, focus as to what we're looking at in the next year and upcoming years and so on and so forth. Can everybody see my screen? Uh, let me see if I can um, enlarge this just a little bit. So this um, uh, first document wa uh, was just the, the bylaws that currently exist and then links to the affirmative action plan, the EEO policy, and the DEI statement. So those documents that I discussed um, where there was some inconsistency between the protected categories. And then as I'm able to, let's see if I can scroll down to the bylaws. And I, I don't see the current, I, I think the bylaws are in this document. It's not the, the, the copied page, pages, but um, there's a link to the bylaws and the definitions that currently exist. Um, so there was a revision, I think, um, in June of 2022. I think that revision was just to get our commission from a seven commissioner to a nine commissioner. Right. Ben, do you remember that correctly? Yep, that's accurate. Yeah. But I think that's all that that revision was. Mm -hmm. So I know that it's going to be sort of very difficult to review this document online. Um, right. My su my suggestion might be that um, uh, I, that we send out the packet as a separate document. It is available on the HRC web, um, website, 
but then um, it would give individuals an opportunity to really review it. Um, so shortly after the beginning, um, at the very start of this month in January, our general counsel made um, a trip to the town to meet with all of the department head managers um, and met specifically with the new managers, which was um, myself, Earl from um, the Crest Department and the new HR director. So the three of us met privately with general counsel to review and talk about issues um, in our various areas. So, so there is, um, so the, I think that the, uh, the council, the general counsel is aware that this might be coming to, um, you know, to their law firm. So I think that probably the best course of action just for sake of time would be for people to take the time to review it a little bit and maybe uh, email Jennifer and I with specific concerns. And then we can um, put it back on the agenda uh, and have an opportunity to discuss it further. Okay, yeah, let's let's do that. Okay. Um, uh, with our bylaws and looking at that, though, we do have on, and this came up in our um, retreat, was the state of, what is it, the annual HRC state of the town report. And through that, uh, I would like for us to either talk about getting that going, possibly getting that going, however we want to go about it. But I think that that's something that has not happened since I've been on uh, the commission. I don't know that that's happened since you've been on the commission, Ben. Um, no, it, it, as far as I know, it was like the last time it was actually done, it was a presentation to what do you call it? The town meeting. So, I mean, that, that kind of tells you how long right. ago it was. We haven't had town meeting for a few years now. <laughs> a few years, like five years, six years, something like that. Yeah. So it's at least that been that long. Yeah. Sure. We're overdue. Well, I think that's a great idea. This is Ronnie jumping in. Uh, I really think it would serve all sorts of purposes apart, in addition to helping us be better at focusing, targeting, serving. It would really alert people to their rights. It doesn't have to be a big complicated report, but it can serve so many purposes. Um, I was excited to see that because that kind of thing is what I looked for. As soon as at the time that I was applying to join, I looked for some kind of thing like that. It articulates what we're trying to do, what we've done, what we hope to do. Uh, so I, I think it's a great idea. I think we should get started on it. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And so with that, I had a very passing thought in the past hour of how to do the work ahead of us and how to kind of get this commission to focus in and um, do work. And so I'm on this other um, committee that has kind of subgroups or subcommittees, if you will, whatever we choose to call them is whatever we would choose to call them if this idea gets kind of a majority vote or a majority th thought process of it is that the way that I see the HRC and in our bylaws, there's a way that it says um, for educational um, purposes, for different purposes that are clearly in our charge that this commission should look at and needs to look at since it is in our charge and so the way that I thought about it is that we do every month we kind of look at and Jen is actually a lot better at this than I am as to what kind of is happening in the month for educational purposes so like um, International Women's Day coming up different things like that to where we post on Facebook but I think that that has been difficult to do so as a commission because we all kind of meet once a month and then we're kind of like oh yeah well now we're running against the clock to try and scramble and get something together and send it into Jen and then I think we miss opportunities to post and to kind of get that educational piece out there 
And as well as kind of all this talk about bylaws, the complaint and review process, looking at our town website, <laughs> looking at different things. So that's kind of another piece that I see. And then the last piece would be the community event piece to it. I think that our community events are wonderful and great. I do think that as far as sitting as commissioner and I'll, I'll speak just for myself as co-chair, I think there's very often times where I'm like, oh yeah, Jen, like what are we doing or what's happening? And I would like for that to be more of an effort on our end as commissioners to kind of be like, oh, we know what's happening. Oh, this is what we're doing. Like this is what's going on on that piece. So with that, when hold on to speech, I would like to propose or make a motion that we create subgroups that involves each commissioner to whatever subgroup that they would like to be a part of that then that subgroup can then report back to this whole committee. So that way it's not that me and Ben as co-chairs are trying to do the educational pieces, do the administrative work and do the um, community activities, so. If I could jump in real quick, um, that's actually how we used to function. That that's exactly how it kind of how it worked. Like like for instance, um, we have like there there are certain like annual like events or or you know holidays or whatever. Not even holidays, just you know days of acknowledgement that that we would look at. What we would do is we would start the year by looking at the calendar and kind of assigning groups of people to each of those different you know like say like. We'll say like, you know, Black History Month is coming up. So there would be different folks that would be involved in like town events. There'd be people that would be responsible for like, you know, coming up with statements and these sorts of things. And for some reason, we've sort of shied away from that. I, I think it's like the flux that we've had here with the membership. But um, yeah, that, that's basically how we used to function. And the, the other thing that I would add to that is that we probably should have, and I, I'm not sure what the disconnect is, why we can't have like a subcommittee that that posts to Facebook where where like you know folks could kind of like forward them you know the, the little blurbs that we would write up for each different type of event or whatever but like I I think it makes sense to get back to doing it that way it, it seemed like we were better functioning like that yeah I, I would agree I see uh Jen your hand is up Hi everyone. So a couple of things. Um, let me just start with what Ben left off on is like, there's not a lot of boards and committees that have separate Facebook pages for a specific reason. And so um, the IT department, when Deb Radway left, cause that's really when it, the responsibility for posting on it changed. Uh, they just were like, the, the the staff liaison needs to do that. We can go back and ask them, but they, they just weren't, I don't know, <laughs> happy about it, I guess. And so my thing with the subcommittees is I like, for some reason, when you call them subcommittees, they it has to be a posted meeting. So I, if, if people just wanna like match up and do stuff, like one on like two people, then that's okay, but anything that exceeds that is going to have to be, you know, posted. Which I think is part of like the problem with people getting together to do stuff is because it's like you right. have to tell me forty eight hours in advance. Mm -hmm. I I agree. Would it be three or less since our quorum is four? Yeah, but I think so. Yeah, but oh, because <laughs> one has to be because we have nine. Right. Right. And we could have like working groups. Like I know, I know. Right. Yeah. Like that's another I, I, I I'm said on. That's kind of how we do this working groups. Yeah. Yeah. If, if whatever we call them, that that would be perfect. But I think that I just I see all this work, and I'll I'll be quite frank. I know bylaws are not people's jams and people thing. I know the administrative end of things is not fun. It gets people excited for certain things so if that's not something that you're interested in but you're interested in like the educational piece of posting or getting it to um gen to post or helping out more in the community event type of situation like i know liz is she loves doing that i know that she's always kind of the first one for you jen to be like yep sign me up or let me know what to do and i'm there like 
I think that dividing up the work in that way, but having like a more official type of language to it just makes sense to, to do. Yeah, man, I, I think that's great. And I think that works. I just want to run it by Paul and Athena tomorrow because sometimes title changes it too. Anytime we've had a working group, they've had to post too. So like, I just want to check with Paul and I can just email everybody. Okay. And then, right. So you guys can actually create what teams you might want. Let me just find out this one logistical piece first. And then um, once we figure that out, then you guys can move, can still can move forward, right? It doesn't have to stop the, the, the work behind it. Yeah, I think, I think definitely. I think that, yeah, because I was just like writing out like, okay, like I know we talked about bylaws. I know we talked about our complaint review process. And then I know we talked about like the website and I was like, oh my gosh, this already seems like a lot of work for <laughs> one or two individuals to do. Yeah, I, I think that we would totally appreciate that, right? Like yes. really, really appreciate that. So um, I think that's great. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm home, I'm cooking and you just don't want to look at my kitchen light. So I just turned the camera <laughs> off. Um, but That's I am funny. here and I am listening. I'm going to go ahead and mute now. So right. how did that work with like the uh, the hero awards? Because I, I remember like we broke that down by task, but I'm not sure that we necessarily defined what each of those <laughs> groups responsible for tasks were. No, it was I, just I like, felt like okay, that was a good approach. Gonna, yeah, it was just more like you're going to do decorations. You're going to go do the grocery shopping. Like we just did it in the meeting. And then that was just that. So, you know. You could, I let me just check in with Paul and Athena yeah. tomorrow. And then yeah, because yeah, I mean, if we have to just break it down in a non official capacity, just to be like, oh, you're going to work on getting posts to Jen and you'll work on whatever it is. And yeah, but yeah, so if you could check in with Paul and Athena, that'd be great. All right. So then with that, then. I don't have anything else to add to bylaws. I know we kind of got sidetracked with this um, potential motion that I just brought up, um, but so where we are at is we are sending it to, well, asking the town attorneys to look at it for writing out things. We'll email Jen or Pamela with any concerns that we have, like the one that um, Ben had brought up with, um, gender identity language. Um, so if you see anything in there that you're kind of like, whoa, I really, uh, that needs to change. And I'm sure they would do it, but just to get an echo on it is always great to add in. Get it over to Jen and Pamela. Anybody have anything else to add to that? Oh, Tyler. Yeah, uh, do we have a timeline for when we should email or uh, contact uh, Jen and Pamela about any changes to the bylaws? Like, is this something we should try to have done within the next couple of days, or is it more over the course of the next month? So um, Jen and I are gonna be attending a conference in Boston um, uh, through the end of this week. So you certainly don't have to do it um, over the next couple of days. Um, I would say um, if you were able to, uh, to respond in the next couple of weeks in advance of your meeting, then we can share information out to the entire group about the comments that we received. And Jen, you still have your hand up. I don't know if you want to weigh in. I don't, sorry, I'm gonna lower it now. All right. Yeah, so our next meeting will be February 15th. That's the third Wednesday of the month. So would you like it by like the eighth? The uh, first, what do you, what are you thinking, Pamela? So um, I would say it um, earlier than the eighth, if at all possible, because we'll need to gather the information and um, send that it out to you and um, post the meeting and the packet. So, uh, okay, so how about we say two weeks from now then the first? Yeah. Alrighty. 
All right, and with that, if no one has anything else, then we will move on to the next agenda item, which is complaint process review. Pamela, were you able to find that um, in our previous retreat? So I, I believe, again, it was part of that um, summary of the retreat okay. packet that I sent out. So, um, and I don't, let's see, I, I'm, I'm doing this from memory because I, uh, I did not do a good job of reviewing everything in advance. But basically what I suggested was a window for which the director would respond to complaints um, and um, a process for insert, I think, I believe informing the co-chairs, I think you want, decided that you guys wanted to be informed of the complaints that we that we received. We, um, as Jen has pointed out, we have to be um, somewhat careful about how that process looks because all of our emails are public documents. And if people are concerned about privacy, then um, not all of the information would want We'd want, we wouldn't want to send all of that, the complaint itself by email. So for, for example, I think recently Jen received a complaint and um, in an effort to sort of follow the policy that we haven't quite adopted yet, she sent um, the two co-chairs a summary of the complaint and discussed the possible actions with them. Um, one thing that I think uh, might um, be suggested by general counsel. I think the general counsel might make some changes uh, to the process. The general counsel was um, uh, a bit concerned about uh, presenting the ability to, to actually uh, adjudicate or decide cases when we don't have the legal authority to do so. And one suggestion, um, would be to have more of a public face that looked like a referral process or um and it you know i don't we can't provide legal advice but you know a listing of agencies that would help specifically that do have adjudicatory um authority but i i you know i think once the attorney reviews all of the documents we'll probably just get a comprehensive package to review and or, you know the commission will get a comprehensive package back to review and discuss um, um so well, my concern yeah. and yeah um, i was just gonna say i think i think that was the idea for that process if i remember that conversation mm -hmm. was kind of like we don't want to just be like oh yeah we don't know anything about it or we can't help you go about your day if we could refer someone to an agency that does know further information about it or that can help in a certain way then yes and that i think i believe that's where that conversation was going with that adding that in there so that's that's where we are. i i think we're um a little bit in a holding pattern until we hear back you know hear comments back from you guys specifically about areas of concern and then present that to the attorney and then have them um come back with specific suggestions for changes. Okay. So then, let's see. Within looking at the retreat, also another thing that came up was the sponsorship of Know Your Rates sessions. Uh, and then some other um, further long-term goals that we have and just I think on a personal level for me at least when I get in conversation with people it's always about affordable housing in this area I think that's the biggest topic that I hear in just one-on-one -on -one conversations with people I think that if we could potentially do something with the affordable housing trust that might look something like what we did um or what, what you all did last night um Pamela and Jen, that's not necessarily a session where it's a conversation, more of a listening session. I think that that might be a disconnect that some of town, the townhouse, town council, or whoever it is that's on the um, decision-making process is that 
that disconnect of not being able to hear people as to, hey, like I cannot afford to live in this town for X, Y, and Z reasons, but it doesn't need to go into an argument to where it comes into an unproductive conversation. But I think that in a long-term type of goal, that might be something that we may consider as well as I know a long-term goal that we also had was food insecurity, that we have something along the lines of that and just, well, my, I guess, bias of working at the Amherst Survival Center. I think that that always is a push for me that I would like to get more <laughs> out there. I think our center is really great and I think that we do a lot, but I know that there's um, community members that don't know that the center exists or that the center has um, free lunch Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and other accessible um, household items for pantry and different things like that. So when we look at that, I don't know if that could become a listening session. I don't know if that's more of an information session. I just think that overall in the next coming year, that's something that we should look at to possibly do. I see Ronnie, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, I'm a community gardener, so I'm very committed to food security and growing food and all that. But the housing issue is so pressing here. Um, it seems like there are lots of organizations that are addressing the food security issue or food insecurity issue, but they're really the housing thing. Today, as we're in this meeting, the planning board is considering some revisions to bylaws where they think that um, particular uh, changes in bylaws will make housing more affordable. I don't know how it's all going to come out, um, but I think that the need for housing that is affordable and housing for people who live and work around here is so, so important. And I, there doesn't seem to be any real coordination or thought. There's a lot of goodwill. So. If we took on an issue for say the next couple of years, to me the housing thing would be would really make a difference. And there are lots of lessons to be learned because this is a problem throughout the country, and there are all sorts of different approaches that have been tried. And you know we have all these brains and Amherst, you know we could we could really push this forward. And it, there's no right lens on this at all. It's all an economic lens, which is an important lens, and I'm not this counting it, but there is a question of our human rights to shelter. So I think also educate in the, on the education side about what are these rights and letting people know you have a right to shelter, you have a right to a safe and secure home. I mean, those are things that would be a nice practical sort of other side of our work where that can actually be good results like. So I would really support the housing thing. Yeah, thank you for that. Anybody else have anything that they want to add to that? Yeah, I, I have a question. I guess this would be for like Pamela and Jennifer, because we, we normally have like a liaison or have had a liaison to the housing trust. And I was just wondering if, there, if anyone knew of any progress with, I know Liz was pursuing that. Pardon me. Liz was pursuing that previously. I'm just wondering like where we stood on that. Because it, it would be great so, to partner with them. Like it's kind of a very important issue and a definitely a human rights centric issue. So Liz is still the um, liaison from this group to the um, housing group. The, and there are a couple in town. So it, one first step, might be for Jen and I just to put together a list of the different um, entities and towns that are of, uh, involved in affordable housing. So planning the affordable housing trust, and then there are a couple of others that are private. And um, then you might, you know, just have a sense of what their charges and think about having um, a listening session, sort of like the event last night where each of those groups might have an opportunity to talk a little bit or share what their charges and then enter into conversations. So um, I uh, will say that I don't fully understand the difference between the different groups. I hear some information from planning, um, but I'm not 
quite certain uh, that I that I understand the coordination between between the groups as well. So as, I think we could offer that, Jen, and I could offer that as a first step, gathering who's involved in those decisions, and then bringing that to the group for you to think about putting today putting together or offering a listening session. Yeah, I think that that'd be great if you both could put that together, Jen. Um, just a logistical because you know um so i just want to make sure that everybody's aware like liz does not sit on the affordable housing trust she's just up like at some at one point every hrc member sat on another related board or committee they didn't sit on it but they attended the meetings to collect the information and so uh we went through a period where we really just didn't have any we didn't have enough members to do all of that and so um, the housing trust was the only one that we kept and Sid was actually a member of the affordable housing trust, which is how Liz kind of slid in. So um, that is something to think about too. Yeah, th thank you, Jen. That, that's kind of what I was getting at. Thank you. Yeah, that, that actually is a good point. And that does bring up a logistical question as to now that our membership is growing and our, um, we have new members, and but we do want to look at possible liaisons to other um, committees, meetings, whoever it is. So that way, when we have member report outs, then we can kind of know what's happening in town through through the through that. I think one piece that I do want to add in with um, a possible listening session or possible however we do it is that speaking to the earlier point of visibility in the town and people getting to know um, the HRC and knowing just the DI department, the Crest department, whoever it is, I think that, that that piece will become crucial in those moments that our community members will know that either we're sponsoring it the DI department is sponsoring whoever we get involved into it, that affordable housing, it's, it's touchy subject, right? I mean, I can think about in my life where there were times where I was like, oh, I don't know how rent is gonna go this month and how that's gonna happen for me. So it's, it's a touchy subject, it's a vulnerable subject. And we do want to give our community members the space to kind of really speak about it, to speak their, their truths of what they're feeling, what they're going through in town, how they're living and and that can get that can get hard and that's why the idea of a listening session at first when i thought about it made the most sense to me because i i don't want it to turn into oh well we can't do it because of this law or we can't do it because of that law or whatever it is it's just more of hey listen listen to the community first let you know kind of where what they're going through what what's what's the real issue here and then maybe we can then start looking at how do we how do we address it? How do we make it more accessible? How do we make it to where families and people of color can live in this town? So that's kind of where my idea was with that. Then the last thing that I have and that I, I just want us to have in our purview of the year is the legacy project that we had discussed um, at our retreat. So that looked, um, what was that? The week after the Amherst block party? Is that what we were saying? Uh, the week the week before. So week before. Um, for the, right. So for the new, new members, I um, at the HRC retreat, I had suggested the idea of taking on of the commission taking on what I called a legacy project. So um, um, the idea of taking on an initiative that uh, would require long-term planning and would hopefully be grow to be something that would be sustainable um, for, um, for the town of Amherst. And so there are a couple of different national models. One is uh, um, a welcoming America. It's sort of focus on immigrants and refugees, but it, it's really expanded beyond that, but that was the initial focus. And so in the week leading up to the um, annual town 
block party, the commission would host a series of events that are really designed to, to build community. So there would be events that, um, that would be cultural events that would be educational, know your rights events um, about um, uh, support services for immigrants and refugees. Just, it could be a host of events. And then the, the culminating event would be the block party, which is already a standard event. So it would really um, provide a nice vessel for having a more robust um, activities around issues related to human rights. So um, I can reshare with the group again, those initiatives and also provide like an, um, another example as well. So that's sort of where we, what we were thinking about with the legacy project. Thank you for that, Pamela. So that is kind of our, our number two item, or number three, sorry. So number four then is upcoming events. So we just had our MLK Day event on the 15th. And I gotta say that was a very well attended event. That was a really was a really good one to see in person. That was my first time doing that one in person. The last one that we did was over Zoom. So the speech was very well, well, definitely well written, but I would say well chosen by our um, commissioner, um, Liz Haygood, and as well as Jen. And I don't know, Pamela, if you had any choice in or putting that together, but that was, that was a really moving speech and I really enjoyed getting to read it and reading through it. So uh, Lunar New Year, we are looking at the 29th for that day. And Jen, please jump in whenever. I'm super, super duper excited about Lunar New Year. It is the first in-person Lunar New Year for the town of Amherst. And it's actually our third event of it. And so we're, I'm trying to go as big as I can go with, or we're trying to go as big as we can go because so we have Dr. Lily So, who is also a pastor over at First Baptist Church. She's the Chinese minister minister there. And so she's going to come and really um, explain the, the history of Lunar New Year, how it became so, and kind of how families celebrate, how she celebrates. She does a fantastic job doing that. She's done it with us for the last two years. Um, she's pretty fantastic. And then you know the restaurants are being really kind we're going to have some lunch um and then after that we have the east culture arts inc coming and they will do they're from hartford connecticut and they will do a a little bit of everything in celebration of lunar new year year of the rabbit so very very excited yeah, it's, it's definitely really exciting and i will say that um the the pastor, she definitely does a really well job of explaining and kind of going through the historical pieces to Lunar New Year, the, my very first event that I had attended with that one. I, I learned so much and that was over Zoom. I was just so much, I really wish that it was in person. So I'm glad that it is happening in person. I think we'll go very well. Jen, um, advertising wise, do you, you want any help with poster or anything or you got that? Oh, yeah. I there's there's a flyer created, and so okay. if I will send it to you guys, I just um, Doctor um, So is actually translating it into Chinese for us. So mm -hmm. um, she's doing that now, and once I get that back, then I'll send it out, and I'll send it out to everybody. Um, and then I, I I'm thinking like our communications director, she will send it out to her. Uh, press release and then I have a list of like community members that I typically send to and then if I can if you guys can send it out to your um friends and family in the area that would be great too just to help spread the word um, yeah that's perfect and uh, what what time is the event starting so the event is going to start at 11 30 I'm going to say I will take I will be there from 9 a.m so help anytime would be greatly appreciated setting up. We have the 
high school cafeteria and the auditorium. And so I, in my mind, I'm envisioning us using the divider and Ben, maybe you can help me out with that. If I can do that, if I can close one half off because we can have Dr. So give her presentation and then we can eat on the other side and then go to the auditorium instead of going back and forth to the auditorium. Yeah, we, can, we can absolutely accommodate that. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll get up with you offline for the details and then we'll make sure it happens. Yes, thank you very much. That's great. Do you need, um, do you need us to pick up food from restaurants? Need help in that department or anything? That would be fantastic. Yes. Yes. Let's. So, let's um, on doing here that. are the things that I will need help with. I will need help with decorations and then people picking up food. So, that's going to be so fresh side is going to deliver, but Ginger Garden, Formosa, and Crazy Noodle will need us to pick up. Uh, HRC members, uh, as far as attending, if you could, that'd be great. And as you just heard, any help with decorations or food pickup will be greatly appreciated. And Jen, you and I can connect, you know, I will be there and then do whatever needs to get yes. done. <laughs> yes. And I just, I also just want to give um, Claudia over at the chamber a little, ooh, ooh, because she has um, really spearheaded the, the donations for the food, right? Um, so I just, I really just want to give her a little bit of a, woo, woo, we'll give her a woot woot too at the event. Yeah. So. Awesome. Yes, much appreciated. Sounds like a fun event. So then we are looking at Black History Month. What are we thinking of doing for Black History Month? I know that there's usually a theme to the month and I am blanking on what this theme is, Jen, you told me. Yeah, so I, I believe it's resistance this year. Um, um, as the theme and Jen and I've talked briefly about it. Uh, I did, she and I did a presentation at the Applewood Retirement Center, our, our community, Applewood Retirement Community this past Saturday. And um, that presentation was based on uh, Dr. King's final book, um, where do we go from here? Chaos our community. So one thought would be to repurpose uh, the presentation that we did for Applewood um, as an offering for Black History Month. I know that there will be, I believe, a proclamation. Um, and um, I, I think that the overall thinking, and I see Jen is un unmuted now, so she can weigh in, <laughs> is to do one event on Zoom and one um, one maybe in-person event, but she's. Well, as far as the, the Zoom or in-person, I'm gonna leave that up to the group. I'm happy to help with e either one, but on February 1st, we'll have our annual flag raising where the proclamation is read. So a lot of folks typically from the community come out to that. Um, and all really that happens is usually the um, Amherst Gospel Choir comes out and sings, or at minimum, Jackie Wallace comes out and sings. And then um, the counselors read the proclamation, and then there's a flag raising ceremony. And that's really, we'll do like light refreshments, and that's really it. Um, we, I do like to do something later in the month that's a little bit more, you know, theme based and moving along with the theme like one year it was family so we you know I found a, I asked a lot of people in the community for photos of their families and I like I created a little movie and and of all the family black families that were here in Amherst or some of them not all and um so that you know we try to connect it with and we try to localize it too right so we have our own black heroes and we've had black heroes who've come to Amherst to visit for other things and resiliency is something that can that that title theme can we can do so much with that because as any BIPOC community 
knows that resiliency is the is is just how we survive, right? It's there's nothing else, you know. It's just how we how we move forward and and survive. So, I'm really excited to to do you know something in the middle of the month, and we will definitely include the some of the stuff from the MLK. But I think we can like just in, there's just so much so it's really up to whoever's going to be working on it with me and Pamela to like chime in and and get an idea from the group as well so I'm not like hostily taking it over it is up to you guys at the end of the day so um, yes, it so is coming up I, I think that leaves a, a good point does anybody want to volunteer to help out with um, a Black History Month event mid mid month I'll volunteer. <laughs> All right. I'll help. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I I'm have done. business travel, so I'm hesitant to volunteer. Sorry. Yeah. And these these volunteers would just be like kind of this the spearheaders of it. So with Jen and um, Pamela, the of course, any help that you can give, I'm sure it'd be greatly appreciated if you could off of that but uh so jen or whoever is taking notes pamela that was uh laverne and ben volunteering for that and um i'm okay with an in-person or zoom one whichever way we go i'm fine with that but i i will leave that up to you all to to decide Right. Anybody else have anything else they want to add in about Black History Month? Well, well can we make a decision if it's going to be Zoom or in person? Because at least okay, that can be done now and we don't have to wait till the next meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's fair. I prefer in person. I'm going to I'm going to say that I think in-person events make the most sense now that we can move in, move to that. Oh, to, to left. Is anybody, is anybody opposed to in-person? I know, Tyler, I know you're out of the country, so obviously you're opposed to it. But <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so then it's in-person. Jen, you have your hand up? Yeah. I, I was thinking it would be great if we had a commissioner who could kind of keep in touch with um, Amherst Media. So that way we can record this and they can air it later for us. Um, yeah, I don't know that they can live stream from them. Like, I, I'm not aware if they can live stream everything or where they can live stream from, but it would be great if we could have somebody just reach out to Amherst Media when we ha were having events so that they can participate. I know they're really busy and they're a little bit short staffed, but I just, you know, think it would be a good idea to include them on some stuff a little bit more. I feel like that might inadvertently fall on me. I'm a board member. Are you? So I, 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 yeah. So I, I'm, I'm the, uh, the school committee liaison to Amherst Media. So I, I can reach out, reach out to Jim Lesko. And I was going to say the easiest place, I'm, I'm sure there's other places we could stream from, but I know we're set up at the high school to do it. So I don't know if like the high school library is set up for it, but I, I can talk to Jim about um, minimally re, like, you know, recording it and broadcasting if we have to. Yeah, it would be fantastic if Lunar New Year, and then if we can't get Lunar New Year, if the Black History Month celebration was recorded and then aired. I mean, it's also, you know, helps them out with viewings too so yep yep and we can announce it too right like so that people can look for it yeah yeah definitely i think if we could get lunar new year ben if that could happen i know that's a tight turnaround but if they can make it happen i think that'd be great but yeah let's definitely try and make it happen for the black history month event that will happen in mid-march or mid-february February, <laughs> not march <laughs> All right, and so then with that then, 
let's see. That is it, unless anybody else has any other topic that the chair did not reasonably, or co-chairs did not reasonably anticipate 48 hours in advance for. Liz is in the attendees. Oh. I don't think we anticipated that. <laughs> did not anticipate that. <laughs> Maybe Liz can give us a quick rundown too if she went to um, the Affordable Housing Trust meeting, or if she would still like to be the liaison for that. Is it is it possible to let her? I'm, in? Yeah, I'm trying to promote her to um, to panelist. Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. There we go. Okay. Hey, Liz, can you hear us? Howdy. Hello. I'm actually just finishing a track meet in Boston. Oh, How wow. are you? Doing good. How about you? Yeah. We were uh, wondering, we were wondering can if you, you had, a, had a, can you hear me? Yep. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay, we were wondering if you had a chance last month to go to the Affordable Housing Trust um, meeting. Um, I did not go to the meeting. I got a report from Sid, and now I got to remember what he said to me. <laughs> um, but they are working on some housing units somewhere, and I can't remember exactly where now. But I wasn't okay. planning on coming to the meeting because I didn't think this meet was going to get over this fast. Yeah, no problem. You can always just send it in an email to and uh, nobody reply all to an email that gets sent. Uh, Jen, your hand, I think went back up. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> yep. So there's okay. some affordable housing. We've been, well, the town has approved some affordable housing off of East Street at the old East Street School. And then there's also that was two, it. That's it. <laughs> there's two on Belstertown Road, I believe, that are gonna that are in the making. I I believe Wayfinders, which I really um, like the the mission of Wayfinders. So Pam, when Pamela and I make that list of resources, we'll include some information about them because they they do great programming for the residents. Um, and then I think there's that still that one on Northampton Road that they're still working on. That's kind of like in the corner of the football fields and the parking lot. So if you go down nine, which I know no one wants to, but if you go down nine, you'll see it. The All other right. thing is that the VFW near the railroad tracks on Main Street has been acquired by the town and they're looking to make that a shelter. Great, I did hear that, yeah. Well, yeah, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And what you just missed, like really quick recap, because I'm not going to go over the whole meeting, but is that we have an event for Lunar New Year on the 29th, and then uh, flag raising for Black History Month on the 1st, and then Laverne and Ben, along with Jen and Pamela, are going to come up with an in-person event mid-month for next month for Black History Month. So okay. it's kind of a lay down recap of it and everything else will be in the minutes. But then right. with that, we were, we were just about to end unless anybody else has anything else that they want to bring up. No. All righty then. I will call this meeting to an end at 741. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.